Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our online church service here at Bow Valley Baptist. My name is David, and we want to welcome you if this is your first time tuning in for us. Uh, and also head over to our website at bowvalleybaptist.com, and you'll have all the information that you might need to know uh, about our church and uh, our live service as well if you're interested in signing up for that. And if you are returning to us after... Uh, after a while, well, welcome back. We want to celebrate this week because we had just wrapped up a week of Backyards Kids Camp at Home Edition, and we want to celebrate uh, the ingenuity and faithfulness of all the volunteers and thank God also for being able to uh, bless others and to uh, spread the, the gospel in so many backyards around Cochrane this last week. This service kind of kicks off a month of a new series that Pastor Gary is going to be leading us through in the Psalms, and we're going to start things off with this video. Take a look. Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take. or sit in the company of mockers. But the man who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. he does prospers. Oh 
As we go into this next song called Open the Eyes of My Heart, I'm going to read Ephesians 1.18 that goes along with this song. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people.
to see you. Hi, my name is Leanne Lean, and I'm part of the children's ministry team here at Bow Valley. Well, today I am standing in front of a pretty extraordinary tree here in Cochrane. Kids, if you recognize it, you'll know that it's what we call the grandfather tree. It's estimated that this white spruce is about three, over 300 years old. How cool is that? Well, you know, I, one thing that I wanted you to notice about this tree, though, particularly today, is the roots. The roots, as you can tell, as you look up the hill, spread up the hill to stabilize the trunk, then also the roots go down the hill as well, reaching toward what I'll show you in a minute down below, which is water, the creek below. Interesting. You know, this tree knew that in order to grow strong and thrive and do well, it needed to spread out its roots strong and grow them strong. Kids, as you listen to Pastor Gary speak today, he's going to be speaking from a chapter in the book of Psalms. As you're listening, maybe you want to draw a tree like this one. A big, strong trunk with lots of roots, maybe some water down below. Maybe your tree has a bird's nest or some fruit. Put your, some fruit in your tree. Be creative. But as you're drawing, I want you to be listening to God's Word as Pastor Gary speaks about what the Bible says about how God wants us to grow our roots strong in Him. And then how do we do that? Happy drawing, listen in, and let's have fun. I'm excited to start this new message series with you, a summer refresher. Doesn't that drink on there just look so refreshing for some hot summer days? Actually, I know we're going to have one. There's got to be one coming. Uh, I have something really fun to do with you as I start out my sermon here this morning. Take this number down. You're going to want it. 587-577-7869. Let me give that to you again. 587-577-7869. Here's why you want that number. Every sun Sunday in the summer as I do this series, I'm going to be giving away summer refresher drinks from some of our local coffee places here in Cochrane. Here's what you need to do to get the first one. Are you ready? You got that number, 587-577-7869. We need a little jingle that goes with that. Anyway, that's the number. Here's what you do. If you will commit to buying someone else a summer refresher drink, if you'll make that commitment of buying someone else a summer refresher drink, the first one that texts me at that number that tells me that you'll do that, I will get you a summer refresher drink. So I need to have your number in return. Of course, it comes on that cell phone number. I'll see your phone number. I'll reach out to you and get it to you in a socially distanced way. But anyway, if you're on our online service, I will get that to you. So I look forward to hearing from you. And But make sure you buy someone else a summer refresher and bless their summer. All right, with that being said, let's jump right into our very first psalm that we want to talk about in this summer refresher series. Psalm chapter 1 is where we're going to begin. God's blessings follow you and await you at every turn. When you don't follow the advice of those who delight in wicked schemes, when you avoid sin's highway, when judgment and sarcasm beckon you, but you refuse, for you, the eternal's word is your happiness. It's your focus from dusk to dawn. Verse 3, you are like a tree planted by flowing cool streams of water that never run dry. Doesn't that sound refreshing? Your fruit ripens in its time. Your leaves never fade or curl in the summer sun. No matter what you do, you prosper. For those who focus on sin, the story is different. They are like the fallen husk of wheat tossed by an open wind, left deserted and alone. Verse 5. In the end, the wicked will fall in judgment. The guilty will be separated from the innocent. Their road suddenly will end in death. Yet the journey of the righteous has been charted by the eternal. Well, this chapter introduces the book of Psalms from the Old Testament. The book of Psalms is actually divided into five different sections, and each one of those sections actually ends with a special prayer, or you could call it a benediction or a doxology. And 
this book was actually written by several different authors. One of the main authors that was a part of writing the book of Psalms, several chapters, was King David. He actually authored 73 psalms. Now, the book of Psalms is poetry, but it's Hebrew poetry, and that means it doesn't rhyme, but it means it has thought lines as you go through the book of Psalms. Now, various New Testament authors really appreciated the book of Psalms, and they actually quoted the psalm writers 400 different times throughout the New Testament, and Jesus loved to quote the Psalms and loved the teaching of the Psalms as well. In the book of Psalms, God is described as a powerful God. He's actually even uh, described as a tender-hearted Father and the God who keeps His promises and the God who lovingly cares for His people. The Psalms also reveal the hearts of those that are a part of the Psalms, and it also helps to reveal our own hearts as we read the Psalms. It helps to reveal our faith, our doubts, our victories, our failures, our hopes, and helps us to look at the amazing future that God has planned for His children. In the Psalms, we meet all kinds of people from a variety of circumstances, crying out to God, praising God, confessing their sins and seeking Him in a different way. Now, if there's any kids that are watching, I want you to hear this especially because there's some fun things I'm going to talk about next. In the book of Psalms, you meet the God of creation and you learn spiritual truths from creation, including the birds and beasts, mountains and forests, deserts, sunshine and storms, wheat, chaff, trees and flowers. And you also learn from creatures of all sorts. Are you ready for this? You learn from horses, mules, dogs, snails, locusts, bees, lions, snakes, sheep, and even worms. (laughs) Isn't that great? I love how God inspired the book of Psalms so we could learn so much about who he is. Well, here's your first notes for the message today. The Psalms teach us to seek God, write that in your line there, with our whole heart, and to tell him the truth, and that's a line to write on as well, to worship him because of who he is, and not just because of what he gives. You can fill those lines out. Well, with all of that introduction, Let's dive into Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. God's blessings follow you and await at every turn when you don't follow the advice of those who delight in wicked schemes, when you avoid sin's highway, when judgment and sarcasm beckon you, but you refuse. Isn't that a nice start, though, to our summer refresher series of summer in the Psalms? Look at that. God's blessings. I mean, what a beginning. Warren Wiersbe, who is a well-known Christian author, said that two of the most popular words in the Christian vocabulary are the words bless and blessing. God longs to bless his people. He wants them to be recipients of his blessing so that they in turn can be a blessing to those around them. Be a blessing to the people that are in their circle of influence with the blessings of God. This idea of blessing is so well known throughout the book of Psalms. We find the idea of blessing, bless, or blessed 108 times throughout the Psalms in 97 different verses. It's there a lot, with approximately 47 of those times referring to the blessing, uh, to blessing the Lord, and about 57 of those times God blessing people. (laughs) This blessing that we're talking about, don't miss this, it's very real, and it is to be experienced by God's people, the people that know God. Taste of his goodness. See how wonderful the eternal is. Anyone who puts trust in him 
will be blessed and comforted. Now those two words, you see it in that passage, taste and see, this is for your notes. They're imperatives in the Hebrew language and they're commands for us to experience his goodness. And I like that word there, his wonderfulness. <laughs> Anyone who puts their trust in him is blessed. Blessed by knowing his goodness and knowing how wonderful he is. Oh, eternal one, commander of heaven's armies, how fortunate, how blessed are those who trust you. Now, if you were to go to an Old Testament prophet by the name of Jeremiah in the Old Testament and read chapter 17, it's amazing how you would find something so close to what we have just read in the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8 now. But blessed, Jeremiah said, are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They're like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are, are not bothered by the heat or, or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Did you see what Jeremiah said at the first of that verse 7? He said, you are blessed when you trust in the Lord. God blesses those who trust him. Now, for your notes, trusting, trusting in the Lord, trusting in him. It's not a passive mindset. Write that down. I don't want you to forget that, but it reflects an active, volitional, submissive change in our thinking. When you say, I trust God, it changes your thinking, which results in the changes in our doing. <laughs> This trusting in the Lord really shapes us. Do you know Jesus had a lot to say about blessing? Look at what he had to say in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. No, he said, how blessed are those who hear God's voice and make God's message their way of life. They trust God and they make God's message their way of life. Look at what he said in John chapter 13, verse 17. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them, for them being a part of your way of life. Here, this is for your notes out of what we've just read. We make God's word, his message, our way of life when we do what it says. When you do what God's word says, you will be blessed. Put that in your notes. <laughs> I like what James chapter 1, verse 22 tells us, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. You see that word, listen, there in that text? It's a great word. You know, we have a Bible college and a seminary right up on the hill, and the word there in Greek can really be illustrated by thinking about someone that audits a course. Now, you can audit courses, but then that just means you're really listening. You can take as much information in as you want to, but you're really not accountable to the professor for the information that you've read. That's really what that word listen there is in the Greek. You're sitting there, you're kind of listening. Now, I'm hoping if you audit courses at our school, you're really leaning in and learning. But this idea in the Greek is that you're just kind of passively listening. You're just listening, but you're not really going to do what it says. What I want to do at the end of my message today, so I invite you to stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to give you some amazing tools that will help you to apply the book of Psalms to your life. So stick with me because there's some things I'm going to give you to really, really help you. Well, in light of Jesus' words we read a moment ago, in light of James' words that you see on the screen right now, I think it's important now that we get back to Psalm chapter 1 and start looking at the blessing, more about the blessing in this psalm. I want you to hear me out. It's not just reading these amazing words, but we must heed them. We must think about how we apply them in our life. We must make the Word of God our way of life. Listen, that is the key 
to blessing from the Old Testament and the New Testament. You're making God's word your way of doing, your way of being, your way of thinking. It penetrates everything about who you are. It is your way of life. I want to take a look at, with you now at a, an amazing picture that Psalm chapter 1 describes as what the blessing of God looks like in your life. You're like a tree planted by flowing cool streams of water that never run dry. Your fruit ripens in its time. Your leaves never fade or curl in the summer sun. Look at that last line. No matter what you do, you prosper. Let me show you a beautiful picture that illustrates that. Isn't that beautiful? Well, in the context here, this idea of being blessed, this idea is like a blessed man. Is there like, he's like a tree by water. It's this striking image. Can you imagine in a very arid place actually seeing this fresh, flowing, beautiful river and then these trees that are right next to it and their roots are able to just keep drinking and drinking of that and that they are so refreshed. And because of being so refreshed, God is so at work in their lives, refreshing them in Him. He says that whatever they do then, they will be prospering. Now, whenever we hear the word prosper, there's a lot of things that we can think. We can begin thinking about finances, doing well in our job, and all that kind of stuff. And the, and the Lord actually is very interested in that. But that word in the Hebrew, the word for prosper, literally means to to push forward, to press through, actually even to get on. And, and it does have the idea of thriving through things, of succeeding through things, but God has a much different idea of prospering, succeeding, and thriving. So I do just want to talk with you just a moment about that. As you, you know probably what I'm going to say is that, that God is obviously much more interested in spiritual and eternal things than he is in physical and temporal things. Now, it's not that those things aren't important to him. Like, he wants to take care of our physical and our financial well, well-being, but that is not where the guarantee is. There's a different guarantee here. The blessed person in Psalm 1 is assured of a much higher level of prosperity. That's things that money cannot buy. True blessedness, unending joy, and listen, peace in the midst of chaos and calamity and an agonizing world and news that keeps coming at you and can be depressing. What God's Word does when we make it our life, it does something in our soul, in our heads, in our hearts, in our thinking, with our words, the way that we relate to others, so much so that there's a, a godly prospering in our life that's something way beyond what money can buy. <laughs> I want us to understand just a little bit more about this idea of bless and blessing. Look at this. This is for your notes. In biblical terms, to be blessed means to be rightly related to God so that your life is, do you see that word? Fulfilled. And you experience this deep personal satisfaction. And this fulfillment, this satisfaction, this sort of blessedness is not, is not related to our circumstances. <laughs> and Happiness, this, this elusive idea of happiness, it doesn't just come by seeking happiness or by saying, I wish I were happy. Don't miss this. True happiness comes through the choice of saying, listen, it comes through the choice of saying, I will choose God and His ways. And that choice brings outcomes like what Psalm chapter 1 describes. So how is it that we can guarantee ourselves to know this blessing, this true joy and happiness we find in Psalm chapter 1? Well, let's look at the New Living Translation of verse 1, and I want to talk about it with you. Oh, the joys and the blessings of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. 
that passage tells us here in this New Living Translation of these joys and blessings where they're, in a sense, not found. (laughs) So here's for the PowerPoint here. Do not follow the advice of the wicked, this passage tells us. Um, The idea from the Hebrew here is that you're just kind of following along without thoughtfulness or reflection of what is taking place. You're just going along. You're just going along. But going along with what? You're going along with their advice, their counsel, their viewpoint, their way of thinking. And who are these that you're taking counsel from? Where they're they are the wicked. Now, what does that mean in the Psalms here? What they are, these wicked people are basically people who conduct their lives as if God does not exist and with no regard for him. I'm curious, are you, are you allowing people like that to shape your thinking? Are you taking advice from people like that that have no regard for God? I mean, if so, you will not know the blessing of God that's described here. There's actually degrees of departure that we see in the passage we've read a moment ago. We're going to look at it again, and I'm going to separate them into words, uh, uh, sections of three words apiece, so that you can understand what these degrees of departure and even from knowing the blessing of God are. Let's take a look at this passage again and look at these words here. Do you see in that passage the word follow, stand, and join? This is, in a sense, a degree of departure away from knowing the blessing of God. Joining is this idea of that you're moving, but you're now moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> and then there's this idea of standing. Now you're actually standing and lingering in sin. And then look, the word join. Now you're actually in the company mixing with mockers. We're going to describe that word here in just a moment. Let me point out three other sets of words for you in this passage. You see the words wicked, sinners, and then also the word mockers. Again, what did that word wicked mean? It means those who conduct their lives as if there is no God. And then you go to this next degree of you're with sinners, and that's people who openly violate God's commands. And then look at the third degree of departure. Then you're with scoffers. Who are they? Well, well, they are people who openly reject the truth. Now I'm going to put three more words together and then we'll wrap this up and then we'll go, go to one final passage of Scripture. Do you see the words advice, stand, and join? We need to talk about those. Here's what happens in these degrees of departure from the blessing of God. First, you listen to advice And you begin thinking wrong thoughts because you're getting wrongful, ungodly advice. And then you stand around. You engage in this wrong behavior, this wrong advice you've been given. And then finally you join in it. You belong to the the wrong crowd. And not only are you joining into it, but you've adopted this fatal attitude of the mocker. And that is not good. So the good news is verse 2, when we go back into the voice translation, it shows you how to not have this in your life, those things we just talked about, or to go down that path, but how to have the blessing of God in your life, in a sense, 24-7. Take a look at it. For you, the eternal's word is your happiness. That's for your notes there. It is your happiness. It's your focus from dusk to dawn. From the morning you wake up to the time you go to bed, God's word is your happiness. It's your focus. So here's what I committed to do for you. I told you early on in my message that I was going to give you some strategies and plans to be able to take the book of Psalms and to help it to be this for you. And so I am asking you to take the things I'm going to invite you to do, the strategies I'm going to give to you, so that you can take these psalms and experience the eternal's word as your happiness and your focus. All right? Here are the strategies I'd like to give to you. And there's the number you can text me and ask for this or email me and ask for it. Here's the first one. Now, you don't have to email me or text me for this first one. I would just say start reading the psalms. One or more a day. How do you find the book of Psalms? Those of you that are new to the Bible, uh, this is how I first learned it. If you take the Bible and you open it up from the very, in the very middle, 
Normally, if you don't have a lot of study notes in the back, you open up right into Psalms, just like that, all right? But here's what I'm inviting you to write me about. Some of you are going to want to take this to a whole different level, and I'm hoping it's a bunch of you. Inundate me with requests for this. I'd love to send you something called 30 Days Through the Psalms, a reading plan. If you would like that and you want to take this and apply this to your life, would you text me or write me and ask me for the 30-day plan? And I will send it back to you. Please, I want to spend all of Sunday afternoon writing people back and sending this out. I would be so thrilled for you to do that. Now, I want to tell you one final thing. Is it okay if I stand up? (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Here's the last one. This last one is the creme de la creme right? The reading plan and prayer plan. If you want to do something with the Psalms that will take this to a whole radical new level in your life of being in the Word of God and praying the Word of God, I would invite you to text me or email me the phrase, dive in. And what I will do is I will send you to a place that will actually allow you to sign up for a free ebook that will in the net will take you through 30 days through the Psalms, but it actually has you doing reading and prayers morning, afternoon, and evening. You can do it over your lunch break in the afternoon and at nighttime too. It will take you to a dynamic place of being in the Psalms, and you can fulfill what that verse 2 says, that God's Word is so precious to you from morning to night. And when you do that, and when it's feeling your thinking, when it's shaping your thoughts, when it is leading and guiding your life and your actions and your worship and your prayers and helping to stabilize your emotions and all of these things, you will experience the blessedness of our God. And I so long for that for you. So I cannot wait to hear from you And please respond to me so you can have these strategies and tools. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your word, how powerful it is. I pray the people listening to this, God, will take these things, they'll write to me and ask for them, and that they will dive in, that we will dive in. I can't wait to dive into that study myself this Monday morning. And God, I pray that you'll shape us. May your word be our delight. May it be our treasure. May it be our joy. And thank you, God, that we can walk in your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. May you be refreshed. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our service today. It's been so great to spend this time with you. A way that many people like to worship is through their giving, through their tithes and offerings. And so you can continue to do that uh, by giving online on our website. It tells uh, different ways for you to be able to give. And I just want to again say to you as our Bow Valley family, thank you so much for how you've continued to give uh, through this time. It's been absolutely amazing how well you have supported our church in a time where it could have been really, really difficult. You continue to bless us with resources. We sent a note out to all of our membership about that today and just how we've seen God work in that. So thank you for continuing to give online and electronically. It actually is the best way for us to still keep receiving uh, gifts and tithes and so So thank you so much for worshiping God that way and honoring him with the fruit of the resources that you have. I want to reach out to you again and just invite you, this why this the PowerPoint slide is here, uh, to invite you to reach out, to text me, to email me, to ask for those things. Ask me for the 30-day plan or ask me for the dive-in plan. And I'm happy to send you either one of those. But as a church family, I'm praying we'll be in the book of Psalms through the summer and that God's word will so refresh you in this time that we're in. Let's be mindful, too, of all those that are going through the challenges of COVID and praying for different countries and nations. As you hear about them, it can kind of be depressing. But what I would challenge you to do is you hear about different places that are struggling with it, begin to lift them up and call out and cry out to God, just like you see in the Psalms, that God would be at work there in their midst. So thank you. Thanks for joining us again. It's so great to have you a part of our online service. God bless you and may you be refreshed.